Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on LabVIEW. It is a powerful software environment but it looks quite different from traditional programming languages. Now for this tutorial, I'm just going to assume that you already know how to actually install and how to download this program. But if not, let us know and we will create another separate tutorial on how to install the main dependencies of this program here. Now, the biggest difference between LabVIEW and other programs is that LabVIEW is graphical. Instead of typing lines of code, you connect functional blocks together with wires, similar to drawing a flowchart. And the fundamental building block in LabVIEW is called a BI, which stands for Virtual Instrument, similar to a function in Python or in any other language. So the first thing that you must do is you must open LabVIEW, you must go to Create Project, and then for the time being, let's actually stick to a blank virtual instrument. Let's click on finish and this thing is going to open now. Now, every BI has these two windows here. First of all, we have the front panel, which is your user interface, where you put your knobs, your buttons, your graphs and your displays. Think of it as the face of your instrument. OK, now we have also the block diagram, which is the second window here, which is basically where the magic happens is the graphical code that defines the logic and behavior of your program. What you do here in this block diagram is going to affect what's happening in the in the front panel. OK, now our case example is going to be that we are going to simulate a thermometer. And if the temperature is above a certain threshold, it's going to give us an alert, OK, which is great for the real world cases. It, it also it's also going to work for voltages for anything you want, basically. OK, now we are inside of the block diagram and we are going to create our thermometer. Now we're doing this because we don't have an actual thermometer that we can connect to the PC. So this is just like a simulation. But if you have one, you can connect it and you can graph your readings from that. And these are going to be real. OK, regardless of that, you're going to do the same. You're going to basically go to the block diagram. You're going to right click. And then if you're working with a real thermometer. You're going to go to measurement IO. You're going to click here. And you're going to basically start reading your data from that thermometer because we don't have one. We're going to simulate one by going to mathematics, numeric, and then we're going to click on random number. OK, now let's place it here. This dice is now this is going to generate a random number between zero and one. OK, now because temperature usually go in a larger range, what we're going to do is we're going to create another function and we're going to go to mathematics, numeric again, and we're going to click on multiply. Great. So let's put this here. Now, I want you to connect this random number generator to this first input, to the top input, which is going to look like this here. And now I want you to pay close attention to this. What we're going to do is we're going to multiply this random number times 50. And how are we going to do this is by right clicking here, clicking on create constant and then typing our multiplication factor, which is 50 and then just click enter. And now what's happening here is that this is going to graph a random number It's going to multiply it by 50. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to compare this output, which is going to be our temperature, by the way. OK, and this would be like your reading from the thermometer from the real one. OK, this whole block here to a, a certain threshold. And for that, we're going to use one more block, which is going to be a greater block, which is inside of the comparison uh, functions here. OK, so we're going to click on greater. We're going to put it here. And this greater function takes two inputs. The first one is going to be, you know, the result of our temperature reading. And the second one is going to be our threshold. OK, so is this number greater than our certain threshold? And how we're going to create this threshold is by going to our actually front panel. You can just switch windows or you can click Control E. We're going to right click here and we're going to create a numeric control. We're going to place it here and I'm just going to call this threshold. And look what's happened. If I choose to the other window, it's here now. We have this threshold now, which is great. We have this threshold in Celsius that I can connect to the second input of this function. Now, because the output of this greater function is going to be basically like a true or false value, which is perfect for our LED, for example, if, if you want it to be like a green LED or like a red LED, we're going to wire this output to actually a LED terminal by going to our front panel here. And we're going to create one more control, which is going to be actually around LED. And we're going to give this a name like, I don't know, like high temperature alert. And now let's switch again. It looks what happened, guys. It's actually here again, okay? Because we created it in the front panel. It's now in the block diagram, okay? And we're going to connect this output with this LED here. Now we have the main logic of the program, but we also want to check the value of the temperature and we want to do this continuously, okay? So we want to add a display. 
So let's switch to the front panel again. And then I'm just going to right click. I'm going to go to graph. I'm, I'm just going to add a waveform chart. And then we just have to connect this waveform chart to the output of the multiply function, which in our case is the value of the temperature reading. Okay. So let's connect this output of the multiply function to this output of the waveform chart, actually the input of it. Let's click here. Let's drag this handle. And there we have it. Now, how we're going to run this repeatedly is by actually drawing a box while loop. Okay, so we're going to basically right click here again on the block diagram. We're going to go to structures, we're going to go to while loop, and we're going to select this whole thing. Okay, the whole thing that we just added here. Okay, now this loop is going to run the code over and over again. Okay, now what we actually need is a control to stop the loop, okay, to stop this code running forever. So what we're going to do is we're going to notice this part here, this red button, we're going to right click and we're going to click on create control. And that's going to create the stop button also here on the front panel, by the way. Now, what are we going to do is we're going to make this run maybe not so fast. So I'm just going to right click again inside of the border of the loop, I'm going to click on time in, and then I'm just going to click on wait, and I'm going to put it here inside of these borders. Great. And now we just need to set a time for how often this is going to repeat itself. So let's actually set a time of 100 milliseconds. Let's right click on the watch. Let's actually click on create constant and let's put 100 milliseconds. Now, lastly, we're going to actually set the threshold for our temperature. Okay. And we're going to set it to, I don't know, 30, for example, so that if a temperature goes above 30, this LED is going to be, you know, illuminated basically. Okay. And in order to run our program, we're just going to go also, let's move this stop button here. Okay, great. And now in order to run our program, we're just going to go to the front panel and we're going to click on this button, which says run continuously. Okay. you can also run it once, but in this case, because it's a loop, we're going to run continuously. So let's click on this button. Look what's going to happen, guys. This display is going to show all of the temperatures running, you know, in time, basically, which are going to be updated every hundred milliseconds. Great. And this LED button is going to appear green actually when the temperature goes over 30 degrees, which is the temperature that we set as our threshold. Okay, if we set it to 50, for example, it's never going to actually go, you know, above that, okay, because our range was from one to 50. Okay, so you can play around with this. And I showed you just the basic logic of this, but you can do a bunch of things. Okay, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much, guys.